Right, now it's time to tackle Photo Pro on the Xperia 1 Mark II. Now, before we get stuck into the video, this is gonna be more like a tutorial, uh, so I really hope you find this useful. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments down below. But for now, roll the intro. So, what is Photo Pro? Well, it's an application found on the Xperia 1 Mark II, which unlocks the full potential of the lenses and the sensors in this, frankly, epic camera setup at the back here. And the user interface emulates that of uh, one that you normally find on an Alpha camera. You know, Sony Alpha cameras? The number one interchangeable lens cameras in the world? The number one choice of semi-professionals and professionals alike? Yeah! those alpha cameras. But first up, the shutter key. You can actually set this up as a shortcut to open Photo Pro straight away, but you have to do that in the standard camera app settings. And also just a quick heads up, when you're using Photo Pro, that's the only way that you can take a photo, you know, just like a, a real camera. But obviously when you're in the standard camera application, you can use the capture button or the on-screen capture button as well. The choice is yours. Now, as I said before in a previous video, don't be put off by the word pro in the application name. You don't necessarily need to be a pro to get the most out of it. I mean, there's a fully automatic mode in there as well, just like there's a fully auto mode in alpha cameras as well. Now, let's break down this user interface because if you're used to using an alpha camera, you may just need a couple of pointers to see where everything is, but if you're a total noob, you're gonna wanna know what all this cool stuff does. Okay, so let's start off with auto mode. Baby steps. As you look at the interface, you'll start to see some similarities in the symbols here. For example, these symbols and these settings. On the Alpha camera, you'd press the function key to bring up your most commonly needed settings, whereas on the Xperia, the 21x9 display means that you can have access to everything immediately. With Drive mode, you can have High, Low, Single Shot or Timer. High will give you up to 20 frames per second on the 24mm lens, Low is 10 frames per second. Single shot, well, that's just a single shot. And timer, well, you get it. This is where you'll find your focus settings. And as you can see, you've already got a couple more options on the Alpha camera, but the Xperia still offers single shot autofocus, continuous autofocus, which is what I'd advise you keep it on, um, and also manual focus. This is greyed out at the moment because we are actually still in auto mode. Focus area lets you toggle between wide and center so you have more control over where you specifically want to focus and the autofocus option lets you toggle it on and off. For the most part, I'd keep this on as well. As we're in auto mode, the rest of the settings are greyed out because the algorithms inherited from Sony's alpha cameras will do all the heavy lifting for you. You can see here, if I change the lighting, the shutter speed and ISO will change accordingly. Over on the left side, you've got a display button which supplies you with a level meter so you can make sure your framing is correct and a histogram which can help you with exposure. There's also a menu button which gives you a bit more flexibility over the camera like introducing touch focus, changing the aspect ratio or even changing the volume key to a shutter button if you're left-handed. Below that, you've got access to your lenses and above that, you can switch out of auto mode and into program auto, shutter priority mode or full manual mode. So, in Program Auto, you'll see that I can now adjust my metering, ISO, and white balance, and I have this exposure value virtual dial up here, which is exactly what would happen over on the Alpha. Just another quick thing about the white balance control, you can actually still stick it on Auto or any of the presets, but you can also create your own presets by hitting Custom and Adjust. You'll also notice that I can now use these buttons for autofocus and auto exposure locking. Activating AF on enables you to see exactly what the camera is locking onto, the same way as if you were to half press down the capture button. The auto exposure lock is a great tool if you want to use the camera's auto exposure algorithms, but apply them in a different way. For example, using the exposure settings to compensate for brightness, but bringing those settings to a darker looking scene. If you change to S for shutter priority, the virtual dial controls the shutter speed. You can still adjust the exposure level by tapping on here, but as you can see, the ISO is going to be automated now. 
And finally, manual mode unlocks the ISO, exposure value, shutter speed, the lot. One last thing, you might be thinking, hold on Dom, the flash is greyed out. Well, that's because I'm still in high drive mode, so although I can capture 20 frames per second, the flash can't go off at that speed, so I'll have to change the drive mode to single shot just to take one picture with a flash. Right, I hope you found that useful, and just remember, you can just stick this thing in auto and still get amazing results, I and mean, that's really what it's built for. But I mean, come on, 20 frames per second with autofocus and auto exposure tracking, real-time eye autofocus for humans and animals. You just can't get that anywhere other than with the Sony. Anyway, with that in mind, just remember to like, follow, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for some more Xperia tips.